Hello everyone, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here. Just wanted to shoot a quick video, little tutorial about the Legend of the Kitsune heads and tails that are available from Wolf King Customs. Want to give a little lesson in how I paint those parts, so if you're ordering some of the unpainted parts that they have available, you'll know exactly how you can paint them to create your own custom figures with. Whether you're going to be painting them classic orange, evil black, or arctic white, I start always with the same process. I always start by basing them out with some spray paint first. Now, these parts have a lot of detail in them. When you're spray painting them, you want to go really lightly and you want to do multiple coats. Uh, if you hit it too hard right out of the gate with a really heavy spray, um, the liquid from the spray paint is going to pool up. It's going to get in all of the fur of those parts, and it's going to ruin some of the detail. So take it slow, light, uh, light coats, multiple coats to get the color that you want. Um, if you're going to do black, that's the easiest one to do because black is going to cover anything. You just got to spray that. I would still go light so it doesn't pool up. If you're going to do either the orange or the white, the, the color of the resin underneath is actually going to play a role in the, the end result of the color of the piece. So the more layers that you use, the more coats you use, the more brilliant your color is going to be. When I paint the orange, this is the paint I'm using. It's Design Master, uh, just orange. I get these at Michael's. You can also get them on Amazon. A number of coats. Every time I paint one of the heads orange, I'm probably doing five, six coats uh, with this to really get the richness of orange that I want. Same thing with the white. You're going to want to take it slowly. Now, when I paint the parts, I start by just laying them down flat with the, the opening down against like the bottom of a table. Uh, and then I spray them, you know, I usually come around to the front of the table and I spray them there. Then I go to the back and I spray it there to kind of get some coverage. I do that a few times. I, you know, I do it, let it dry, do it again, a few different coats. Uh, then I actually flip the head over so that head, that whole opening is exposed. And I do the bottom side that way as well. That's both for the regular heads and for the hooded insert pieces. Um, these are flat and back, so I actually lay them flat with the, the flat part against the table, the face pointing up. I spray them down that way a few times. Then I flip them over so the back is exposed and I spray the back as well. That's step number one. Um, with the tails, actually they're kind of a large uh, item. So what I do with that is I lay it on one side, spray one side a few coats, flip it over, spray that side a few coats. Um, and then I usually end, there's a little kind of bump on the back that it will actually allow you to position the tail. If you get it just right, you can kind of balance it on itself. I'll position it like that and then I'll give it another spray. That allows me to really get that inside piece as well. Um, once I've achieved the color orange or white or black that I want, the next part is to start painting some of the details. So with the tails, what I'm going to do is uh, on both the orange and the black, I like to paint the tips of the tails. The white tails I don't paint anything on. Once I've got them based out in white, they're pretty much ready to go. But for both the orange tails and the black, I do like to paint the tips. Um, for the orange, I paint them white. For the black, I paint it kind of like a, like a neutral gray. That's actually the color I've been using. I've been using this Vallejo 992 neutral gray, um, but ultimately any kind of like mid-tone gray, uh, gray will work. I just like the gray on the black tail better than the pure white. I think it looks a little more natural. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to dry brush that on. So what I like to do is I use a brush like this. So this is a, a Testers number eight. It's got a flat tip at top. I find that these work really, really well for dry brushing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the white paint in my paint tray, dip the tip of my brush in, and then I'm going to rub that off on like a paper towel. I really want to dry the brush. That's, you know, hence the name. And then I'm going to just gently start to paint that almost dry brush onto the tail tip. 
and there's no defined arrow. You can go as you can make the tip of the tail as you know, call it as you want, as you know, high up on the tail. I, again, I just like to do kind of the tips there. Um, but with that dry brush, just like I said about taking it slow with the spray paint, so the paint doesn't pool. When you dry brush the tips here, instead of using like a lot of wet paint that's going to get all into that fur, all into the crevices, this is just going to get the surface and it's going to give you a lot of control to determine how much coverage you actually want for that color. I'm going to do the same thing dry brushing wise for the chins of the heads. So again, on the white heads, I don't do any dry brushing, I don't do anything on the chin, um, but for both the orange heads and the black, I do paint the chin areas once again. For the orange, I use a pure white. For the black, I use that neutral gray. And what you're trying to get here on the chin is you want it to be, you know, the actual chin itself. You want to get the, the front of the muzzle, you know, right under the nose, and then you want to get the edges of the fur, kind of like the whisker type area on, on the edges of the face there. I um, mean, what I just do is, again, just dry brushing. Make sure the brush is very, very dry, just a little hint of paint on it. That's going to allow you to layer it on and get the coverage that you want. But I'm just dry brushing that very, very slowly, and again, up around that muzzle. Um, it's okay if you get some of the, the white or the gray on the nose, because you're gonna eventually paint that nose black anyway. So to actually get the, the dry brushing paint as close to the nose as you're gonna want it, you might get some on the actual nose itself. That's not gonna be a problem. Okay, so once you have the chin painted, the next piece I'm going to do is gonna be the eyes. So if you look at the sculpture, um, there the eyes are you know molded in. There's a space for them. It's very, very, very small. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use a very small brush. I like to use these brushes from Windsor and Newton. This is their Series Seven brush. Um, this is actually the Micro Series, and it's a size zero zero. It's a very, very small tip very, very fine. I just dip it a little bit in the paint and then I just very, very carefully put a little paint on those eyes. Um, I wanna do a nice fluid motion. That's what I find works best. I personally paint the orange heads with black eyes. I paint the white heads with blue eyes and the black heads with uh, purple eyes. The colors that I use, just so you know, for the, the blue eyes on the white head, I use Vallejo 962, which is a flat blue. And for the, the black heads, I use Vallejo 959, which is just a purple. Ultimately, you can paint any eye colors you want. If you want to do blue, purple, any of them will suffice, but those are the ones I use. So I paint those eyes, and then the last piece that I'm going to do is going to be the nose. And the noses are just painted black. You'll see it's going to be a little bit of paint that you're going to want to add to the top of the nose and then around the front of the nose and around the nostrils, okay? I paint all three heads with a black nose, including the black head. Even though the black head itself is black and the nose may already be largely black, as I said a moment ago, because you're going to be dry brushing the snout, you might get a little gray or white paint on the tip of that nose. So I find it beneficial to paint that as well. And that's all you're going to have to do. Base the color out in the color that you want, but be patient, light, uh, slow layers, you know, multiple layers to build it up to get the coverage that you want. Then you're going to paint the chin, dry brush that chin or dry brush the tip of the tail, paint the eyes, paint the nose, and you're pretty much ready to go. The last step that I will do is I'll spray it with a little, uh, a little sealant. So this is a tester's spray spray lacquer um, this is just a dull coat it doesn't make it shiny or anything like that it uh, actually it dries when you spray it on it's going to look shiny but it dries very very quickly and you'll never even notice that it was there it doesn't leave any residue it's not sticky um, it's certainly not shiny or anything with the dull coat so that works really really well gives you a little bit of extra protection on this because again these are 3d printed parts you're going to be custom painting them they're not going to you know, hold up to the wear and tear that a factory produced piece would. So that little extra protection might help. That's pretty much it. You grab one of these heads, base it out in the color, paint the chin, paint the eyes, paint the nose, seal it up. That's all you have to do. If you want any of these Legend of the Kitsune parts, 
one of the two heads if you want the tail all you've got to do is go to wolfkingcustoms.com they'll take care of you thank you very much for watching can't wait to see what you do with these parts